We are upstairs at the Victoria Miro Gallery in the middle of London. Uh, Victoria is my art dealer. Yeah, this is the room I made the tapestry for. And this wall is 20 metres, so I made a 15 metre tapestry, so it's framed nicely in the middle of this wall. The technology inspired me initially. Um, uh, somebody showed me a sample of one of my prints made into a tapestry, and uh, I liked the, uh, the the quality of it because often with those digitally uh, made products, they have a deadness about them. But because it's a woven tapestry, um, it's quite kind of uneven and organic looking, even for something that's been made by a machine. I like uh, folk art of all different descriptions, so I was looking at Lithuanian and Russian popular prints. The most famous tapestry in British culture is the Bayeux Tapestry. And it's about the Norman invasion of Britain in 1066. And I called mine the Walthamstow Tapestry because I wanted to be about, I wanted to have a, an association with that old idea. Um, but Walthamstow is where my studio is. If the Bayer tapestry is about the invasion by the Normans, the modern invasion really is in our heads. It's the invasion of marketing and brands and how they go into your head. I deliberately didn't put any kind of the logos in the style of the brand. I wanted them all to be neutral so that all that was left was the emotional resonance of the brand. So if you say Samsung or Sony or Honda or Versace, immediately a kind of emotional idea comes to you. In the middle is sort of Madonna of the brands, because I wanted to have a religious sort of feel about it. And she, instead of clutching the infant Jesus, she's clutching a kind of Chanel handbag. Branding. Consumerism. It's the most powerful religion we have, I think, in our society. My teddy bear features a lot. There he is as a Japanese teddy bear. He is the supreme being that rules over my uh, universe. He's my god, basically. So he's, there he is as an Islamic Alan. That's a Japanese shrine I made for him. It's got a little Alan measles inside. This is me giving birth to him from my penis. I had a very creative play when I was a kid, and that's how, where an artist learns to be creative, is when they're playing. And so I had an imaginary world. My teddy bear was the leader. I played out my unconscious psychodramas in my, in, you know, in my playing as a, as a metaphor. So, you know, the Germans were my stepfather, and Alan Meese was, was my kind of male superego, and you know, they battled it out. And um, so that's you know, that's what all children do to a certain extent. I was just, I just had, had perhaps a more elaborate one that served me very well as an artist. I went to evening classes after I left uh, uh, college and uh, I just went there because a friend said it's cheap. I quite enjoyed it, but I never thought this is the thing that I'm going to be famous for. So these, this is, these are some of my early pots from the 1980s and um, people thought that um, they were quite badly made in many ways and uh, people thought that was kind of ironic, you know, that I was doing it deliberately. But it was just that I was learning on the job. So I exhibited my very, very first things I made at evening classes. It took about maybe eight, or eight years or ten years before I thought this is what I'm doing. I didn't decide that it was going to be the thing. It just gradually happened that I became well known. This is Our Mother, um, which is a cast iron sculpture. The idea was that it was a kind of, uh, like a pilgrim figure walking through life. You know, this whole idea that we're going through the journey of life, 
having psychological baggage. So this is a kind of idea that you know, you're carrying all your baggage. I made all these pieces in ceramic first and then they were cast and then uh, we painted them and then we rubbed the paint off and then we put a chemical on that made it go rusty so it looks lovely and old. You know, I'm, I'm a great lover of reliquaries where, you know, the bones of the saints or whatever, and so I made my own reliquary chest. Because art thinks it's, you know, it's all about being really, really intellectual. Because the intellectuals are quite often the people that are in charge of art. And so me, I think decorative is the most noble thing you can do in art, is to be decorative, because it's visual art, for Christ's sake. For me, it was making this amazingly rich object that is like a toy, that is like a, a Madonna, and yet is modern, she's got Wellington boots on. You know, if you're walking through the muddy world, that's what you wear.